channel. For those of you who don't know me or if you've never been here before, welcome. My name's Rachel and I'm the owner and creator here at The Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Happy Friday. I hope you've had a great week so far. Uh, for today's video, I have a thrift flip for you and I created a small vignette using a few items out of my stash from my kitchen and then I also redid a little cabinet that I've had sitting uh, kind of in my to-do pile for a while now. So um, I did, as you can probably guess, use one of my brand new beautiful decoupage papers on one of the projects for today. So I can't wait for you to see that. And I hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I so appreciate that. And uh, if you're new here and you haven't already, I would love it if you think about subscribing to my channel. Uh, and then you can just hit that little notification bell and that way you don't miss anything. Let me know at the end of the video which of the projects your favorite one was. And without further ado, let's get to them. So my first project for today was this cute little metal wall pocket that I found and this has such great texture on the front of it and I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to do some distressing but I wanted to have a nice even color underneath when I went to paint it to distress back to so I took it outside and gave it one good even coat of Rust-Oleum 2X in the dark brown before I get, began painting it. So for this, I'm using DIY's crinoline, which is this absolutely beautiful ivory color. And I did paint it on with my brush and then went back over it with a different brush to just stipple the paint so that it gives it a little bit of a different texture rather than the brush strokes. So here I am just putting that second coat of paint on. And then I did take a little bit of water to kind of reactivate the paint. Um, gave it a good spray and then uh, used that other brush to just stipple that paint. So I only painted the sides and the front of this. I wanted the rest of it to be that beautiful brown just for that good contrast. Once that was done, it was time for distressing and I'm just using a really simple shop towel that I dampened with some water to do this step. And I am just rubbing all over the raised areas to wipe back some of the excess paint and really reveal that beautiful detail in the front of this. I love using this wet distressing technique rather than sandpaper, mainly because sandpaper makes such a dusty mess everywhere. I have a hard enough time trying to keep up with the dust in this place. So this makes a much cleaner distressing option. Uh, then it's on to sealing my paint. And for that, I decided to use DIY's Big Top. Beautiful, durable finish. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it, which I didn't mind for this piece at all. And once that was done, this piece is complete. <music> Project two is this candle holder that I've had for a while now. This thing's been sitting in my stash so long that I had to give it a second bath just so that I could paint it. So I decided it would add a little bit of height though to the small vignette that I'm creating. And I went ahead and went with DIY's faded burlap for this piece. I love this color. It's such a beautiful neutral, uh, just kind of a taupey, light taupey brown. Um, blends with everything. And when you see it with Project 3, you'll understand why I chose this color. I also decided... Um, to heavily distress this piece. So the next step here is taking that damp shop towel and giving this candle holder a good distressing. Now, as you know, if distressing is not for you, you can totally just skip this step. But when you see uh, project number three, you'll understand that I really wanted this to have kind of that farmhouse aged vibe. And so that's why I decided to go with this heavy distressing on this piece. 
Once that's done and I'm happy with my results, I set it aside to dry again and then it's on to waxing. And for this one, I am going to be putting some dark wax on it. So the first thing I did was use some DIY clear wax, gave it one good even coat of the clear wax, just uh, applying that with that soft brush that I have. And once that was done and I had wiped back any excess with my um, shop towel, it was on to using the dark wax. And I really wanted to get it down into those grooves on the candle holder. So I'm using a smaller brush and just kind of loading that up with the darker wax. Now I do... Um, liquefy I guess my dark wax with a little bit of mineral spirits so um, it just helps it go on a little bit easier and be a little bit thinner so it's not quite so goopy um, which kind of helps in these situations so anyway I just take that small bristle brush and apply that wax everywhere just making sure that it gets really well down into all of the grooves and then I take my a dry shop towel and just wipe off all the excess. And then this piece is done. And I absolutely love how it came out. Now I've had this platter sitting around for a little while now. I don't even remember where I got it exactly. And I've known for a while that I wanted to use decoupage paper on it, but I had no idea what paper I wanted to use. And then I got in my recycled order and um, with your help telling me what some of your favorites were, I just, I chose uh, the decoupage paper I was going to be using on this. So first step is going in with some DIY white swan and uh, giving this two good even coats of paint as a base coat so that my image is nice and sharp when I lay my uh, decoupage paper down. Once the paint is completely dry, I went ahead and got out the paper I'm going to be using. And that is this beautiful paper called Red Rooster. So I laid it down and cut away uh, the bulk of the excess. I didn't cut it right to the platter, just shortly away from it. Then I went ahead and sealed my paint. Now the reason I did this, I'm just using some spray sealant is that I have decoupaged before where the uh, liquid patina has actually reactivated the paint and the paint has then bled through into my paper and I really didn't want that happening with the rooster. So as you can see, I spritzed it with a little bit of water on the back of it just to get out any wrinkles, laid it down and began the decoupage process. So for this, I'm just using my liquid patina and I'm painting a strip on, laying the paper down, smoothing it out as best I can, and then moving on to another strip of the liquid patina. I just keep repeating this process until the entire platter is completely covered with the paper and it is laid nice and flat. Now I did remember that somebody had told me if you use a ball of cellophane to help with the smoothing process, it works wonders for the wrinkles. And I remembered I had some cellophane, so I did go grab some and use that. And it really, really does help with the wrinkles. Now you notice that I was super careful to not paint that little black edge of this platter. So once it, I was done with the decoupaging process and it dried for a little bit, I went in with a razor blade and very, very carefully and meticulously uh, cut the edge of this paper all the way around so that you could see that black edge um, on the platter. Now I, for some reason, did not hit record when I finished this piece. And so once I was done with this portion of it, carefully cutting away the excess paper, I did go in with one good even coat of liquid patina all over the top of this piece. Now I need to decide, should I leave this a platter or add a hanger so that it can be hung on the wall? Let me know what you think. Thank you. 
Project four is this cute little uh, vintage cabinet that I've had sitting in my to-do pile for quite some time. The top of it was a mess, so I started by sanding it. Now my hope was to get it to sand it down to the wood and be able to stain the top of this. Uh, so I started with kind of a lighter grain sandpaper, uh, wiped it back a little bit, and then went in with a little heavier grit just to get down through that finish into the wood. Uh, but once I got down there, I realized that there were some stains in the top of this that went deeper than I could possibly go with my sander. So it was going to need paint. Once I figured that out, it was time to prep for painting. And so first step was removing the hardware. So here I am just taking off the hardware. It took me a second because I didn't realize there were actual little nails on part of the hardware keeping it on. So it kind of surprised me a little when they didn't come right off in my hand. Uh, but once I got that figured out, it was time for cleaning. And for that, I am using my handy dandy crud cutter and just giving this a really good spray and then wiping it down inside and out. And once I'm done with the crud cutter, I went in with some clean water just to make sure that I got rid of any of the uh, residue left behind by the crud cutter and also just any excess dust or anything. Once the piece was nice and clean and thoroughly dry again, it was finally time for paint. Now for this, I'm going in with Sweet Pickens Milk Paint and the color is called Sweet Potato. And I love milk paint just because it gives such a beautiful, uh, almost eggshell finish to my furniture pieces. And I just, I really, really like how it looks and feels. Now the thing with milk paint is it can be chippy. It can give you a chippy finish. So the key is if you're putting it on a slick finish, like the finish on this piece, you really need to use extra bond if you don't want a chippy finish. I didn't want chippy on this piece, so I did use the recommended amount of extra bond in both coats of paint, my first coat and my second coat. So this is just the first coat going on. It was a little bit tedious because of all of the uh, detail in the front of this piece. And I did go ahead and do the top and the sides of both of the doors. Uh, and then, like I said, going in there and trying to get all of that detail without any drips or runs was a little bit of ex an exciting experience, <laughs> but I, I got it done. So once I had finally gotten it painted with two coats of paint, each coat I think took me about an hour to do. Uh, and once those were dry, I took it outside and gave it a good sand. Now, although I didn't want a chippy finish, I did want to distress back some of these beautiful details just because there was so much gorgeous detail on this piece that I didn't want to get lost in just a solid sea of orange. So that is what I'm doing here just with my uh, rotary sander um, just and 220 grit sandpaper, basically going over all of the raised edges and around uh, the little frames, uh, giving it a really good sand. Once that was done, I went in by hand and I used some 220 grit sandpaper to just get anywhere that the sander couldn't reach. This helps smooth out the paint, although uh, for whatever reason, when I mixed this paint, it, there weren't really any chunks to it at all. It went on very, very nice and smooth. Once that was done, it was time to haul it back inside and I gave it a little bit of a cleaning with some shop, damp shop towels just to get rid of all the paint dust. There's Salty. <laughs> She's my constant helper. Then it's time to finish the, the piece and by finish I mean seal the paint and so for that I'm using wax and I am going in with DIY's clear wax as the first coat. And I am just giving this whole thing one good even coat of the wax, doing it in sections, and then wiping back any excess with a shop towel as I go. I also waxed the two inside shelves of this piece just to give them a little bit of a um, refresh, I guess. Once that was done, it's time for the dark wax. Now, 
for me, the dark wax is going to be used more as a highlight for some of the shadows in this piece. So I'm taking a small artist brush and I'm just working the wax into the places that I think I need to look a little bit more grungy and to just really um, accentuate the shadows in this piece so that it makes the uh, texture more apparent and highlights all of the beautiful detail in this piece. Now I will say that this is kind of a lengthy process. There are a lot of details to go over uh, with that dark wax, but I love the depth and dimension that it gives to all of the little raised areas in this piece. Uh, so totally worth it in my book. Once I was finally finished with all the raised panels around the front of it, it was time to move on to the other areas of the piece. And I'm just kind of using the same technique, going in with that dark wax where I want to really highlight the shadows and make everything a little more grungy. So anyway, I really do love how this piece turned out. I hope you guys do too. projects for today. I hope you liked them and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts on the sweet potato color on the little cabinet. Now remember, be nice. I know orange isn't exactly everybody's color, but I would love to know, would you put that in your house or not? So just let me know in the comments below. And uh, I'd also love to hear your thoughts on the chicken. I love that rooster, um, but do I put a hanger on it or not? I uh, should I just leave it as is and people can use it as a platter or should I put a hanger on it so they can put it on their wall? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. Anyway, I re please remember if you did like the video to give it a thumbs up. I so appreciate that. And if you're new here and you haven't already, I would love it if you think about subscribing to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything. For Tuesday's video, I am hoping to have a thrift haul for you. Uh, we are planning a junk run for Sunday, so hopefully the thrifting gods are nice to me and we're able to find some cool things on our uh, foray out into the thrifting world. So keep your fingers crossed for me. I'm definitely going to be looking for some things that I can put decoupage paper on. So hopefully I find some things. Uh, anyway, I hope you have a great weekend and I hope you'll join me here on Tuesday and thank you so much for being here. Bye.